In addition to the manual tools we saw in the previous lesson, Hatch Cross Stitch has four tools for automatically applying stitches. Let's see how they work. Let's start with the Area Fill tool. You can fill closed areas with stitches using this tool. The fill can be a different color and it can be a different stitch type. So if I want to fill this cupcake here, I can hover over it and I can see that it uses a full cross and it uses color C50. Right now I have color C1. So if I want to match that, I'll just click C50, click the bucket tool, the area fill tool, and click. And it's all filled. Let's see that on this cupcake, I want a different color in here. I'll click this kind of peachy color and click in there. Let's try a different stitch type. Click a different color. Click OK. And you can see how that works. Now here we have some sample squares down here. We cannot fill in an area that is defined by a single line outline. So if I click in here, nothing happens. How about this one? Nothing happens there either. How about over here? I can fill that. And I can fill that. And notice on these, that where it kind of closes in the border, it leaves the border. But where the border was open, it filled right up over the border. Now here's another interesting thing you can do. Let's try filling with a border. I'll click single line. I'll click this dark color. And let's click in there. Now let's try current cross stitch. Let's try that again. Let's see what happens now. I'll click blue, click inside there. So you could keep selecting different colors and get an interesting look going on here. The next two tools we'll look at require an image. Create a new design. I'll insert an image. I'll pick the gardening ladybug. Now I have modified this ladybug so that she has a white background. If you're working with a transparent PNG, the image is going to come in dark. You can still use it. It'll still see the background, but it's just easier to see what we're doing on this color. I'll go to the design mode. I'll click the magic wand tool. Now the magic wand tool will color in all the areas of a specific color, and it uses whatever color I've chosen, and it uses whatever stitch I've chosen. So I'm going to make sure I have a fill chosen, and I will do these dots, and I think I'll do them in this turquoise so that you can really see them. Click the magic wand, and when I click that, all of the dots, even though they're not connected, are colored. If I want to do the body, I'll pick a different color. Let's do this black. Click that, and I'll click a color for the wings. And that's just how easy that tool is to use. Once again, I could have selected a different stitch type to fill with. I'll select all of those and click Delete. Now we'll use the Auto Stitch tool. Select the Auto Stitch, click on the image. Now we need to make some choices on the Auto Stitch image. Here's what our original image looks like. I'll zoom it up so we can see it really well. And here's what it's going to look like with the current palette. I want to omit the background. I can also pick a specific thread chart. And then I'll just click a different thread chart. I can kind of try these out and see what looks really good. Now, of course, that's assuming that I actually have those colors. So I use Madeira. So I'll slide down here to Madeira Poly Neon 40. And we can see that. And this is mapped to four colors in this image, so I'm just going to change that to four. And I'll click OK. And my image has been digitized. It's just that quick. I'll hide the image, and you can see the design. So the fourth tool we have for auto-digitizing is the lettering tool. Here you can see some sample lettering, and you can see that they look quite different from each other. The blue lettering was created with clear type font smoothing, which is turned on by default in Windows Vista or later. So obviously we're working in Windows 10 or later, and it's real easy to turn this off. So all you need to do to do that 
is go down to your Windows taskbar and type in clear type, all one word, in the search box and you'll find it. It's real easy to do. Just follow the steps and you can turn it off. And once you turn it off, you'll get these nice clear letters. So to use it, I'm going to right click on the lettering tool and I get to pick my font and some fonts are going to work better than others and some sizes are going to work better than others. So let's just try buttermilk and see what happens. And I'm going to pick a fairly large size and then I'll just type. I'll slide up. That's what it looks like before I apply stitches. I'll press enter and that's what it looks like. Now I do have clear type still turned off. Now creating lettering in hatch cross stitch is different than creating lettering in hatch embroidery. These are just stitches, just like we've done with our other cross stitches. They aren't letters, they aren't fonts. So if I spelled this wrong, or I need to change the size or do anything that involves changing the actual text other than changing the stitches and the color, I would need to delete this and redo it. Now, as we look at Arial, you can see here it is at 36. 36 is about a half an inch. It looks okay, it looks better at Arial 48, and it looks kind of chunky at 72. 72 is about an inch tall. You can make your stitches either as fills or outlines. So you can see the outline version. And once again, the blue is with the clear type turned on, which is the default in Windows, and the red is with the clear type turned off. As you can see, these auto tools in Hatch Cross Stitch are quick and easy to use. In the next lesson, we'll look at editing cross stitch.